Hi guys, Marcus here and welcome to Chinese Entertainment Update, May 16th, 2023. I release episodes every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday between 7 and 10 p.m. Pacific Time. This is episode 686 and the rundown with timestamps is in the description box below. Now, because I use Chinese names quite a bit on my show, if you want the English spelling of them, you can turn on subtitles. I create them myself. In today's episode, The Young Brewmaster's Adventures begins filming. It is the prequel to The Blood of Youth. Yang Yang shares some pictures from Italy. Zhang Zhehan shares a short message on YouTube. And my final thoughts on the long season. No spoilers as usual except for this one. It is a masterpiece. We usually begin with what's recently premiered, but nothing to report for today and yesterday. So we begin with dramas that are rumored to premiere imminently. There's Story of Kunning Palace, the costume drama starring Bai Lu and Zhang Linghe. After the success of one recent costume drama until the end of the moon, surely female lead Bai Lu will hope for Story of Kunning Palace to emulate those results. Kunning Palace is rumored to hit Aichi on May 18th, that's in two days' time, which is cutting it close, but avid Chinese drama fans would know that it's definitely been done before. Here's a poster the drama shared last week to announce 3 million reservations already on Aichi. Then there's Where Dreams Begin, the retro drama starring Xiao Chan and Li Qing. It is rumored for a May 21st premiere and will drop on Tencent if and when it does. Angels Fall Sometimes is a modern melodrama that supposedly tugs at the heartstrings. It stars Landy Lee and Ling Yi and will stream on Tencent. The rumored date is May 21st. In Later Years is a modern drama starring Hao Lei and Angel Wang. It is rumored for a May 25th premiere and will stream on Aichi. And lastly, Twilight starring Ellen Ren and Angela Baby. The modern drama is rumored for a May 26th premiere and will stream on Tencent. I will update again on all these dramas if and when they confirm their premiere dates. And that's it for dramas and premiere dates. Moving on, dramas that recently passed review. I have four to update on today. Beginning with Young Blood Season 2, starring Steven Zhang and Zhou Yutong. The two stars are the main characters of a group of six youngsters from different backgrounds. They come together to form a team of elite spies for the Northern Song Dynasty. The costume drama passed review and obtained a distribution license for 20 episodes on May 12th. Season 1 came out in 2019. Since then, Steven Zhang and Zhou Yutong's drama careers have really flourished. Also passing review is We Go Fast on Trust, a sports drama that revolves around motor racing. It stars Ellis Ko and Zai Zilu and obtained a distribution license for 22 episodes on May 12th. Then there's The Great Pay, starring Kido Gao and Zoe Meng. It passed review and obtained an online record number on May 15th. The costume drama is slated for 24 episodes and will stream on Yuku. And in case you were wondering, distribution licenses are for TV dramas, online record numbers are for web dramas. And lastly, for dramas that recently passed review, Only Love You, a costume drama starring Peng Chuyue and Zhao Qing. It obtained an online record number on May 15th. More updates on the aforementioned dramas when they get their premiere dates. Moving on, Raps and Bootings. We begin with Shao Nian by Ma Zhu Chunfeng, starring Neo Ho and He Yu. The costume drama was announced on May 5th, and they have promptly started filming. Here are the two stars at the booting ceremony held a couple of days ago. And here are co stars Hu Lianxing and Xia Zhiguang. The drama is based on a novel and an anime called The Young Brewmaster's Adventure, which is available on YouTube. I'll just refer to the drama as that until it comes up with an English title. It is also the prequel to the popular recently aired wuxia drama The Blood of Youth starring Li Hongyi and Liu Shuiyi. Brewmaster's story takes place 20 years before the events of The Blood of Youth. Neo Ho, who stars in the currently streaming fantasy costume drama Back from the Brink, plays Bai Li Dongjun, the protagonist in the Young Brewmaster's adventure. According to Baidu, Bai Li Dongjun has a father who is an unrivaled martial artist and a mother who's from a famous clan, but he himself is uninterested in martial arts, instead preferring to brew wine. The Young Brewmaster's adventure is slated for 36 episodes and will stream on Yuku. 
A drama rap now, Lorena Song and Liu Yuning's The Prisoner of Beauty held their rap ceremony on May 14th. Here is Lorena with her rap bouquet and Yuning with a giant rose. In the costume drama, the stars play a pair of husband and wife whose ancestors had grievances with each other. The couple's daily lives consist of endless probes and attacks on each other, and contests that are filled with laughter and tears. Liu Yuning shared some photos to mark the drama's rap. I particularly like this one. Three guys dressed in ancient garb, one holding a mic boom, one pulling focus, and another operating the camera. Lorena Song shared this one of herself standing in front of a table of milk tea with pearls. Apparently, the tea was a treat from Zhou Yutong of all people. On the same day, Lorena Song reciprocated and treated the cast and crew of Zhou Yutong's latest show to tea as well. The two actresses must be friends or something. Lastly, for drama updates, just want to update on a couple of trailers that were recently released. There's Destined, starring Bai Jingting and Song Yi. The Ai Chi Yi costume drama shared their first trailer, which is available to view on YouTube. In the drama, Song Yi is a merchant's daughter whose one hope in life is to find a good husband and marry into a good family. She thinks she's finally succeeded when she marries a rich young master, played by Bai Jingting, but realizes that he thinks of her as a gold digger and would rather spend his time in brothels than with her. Also sharing a trailer recently is Snow Eagle Lord starring Xu Kai and Guli Naja. Tencent shared the costume drama's trailer a couple of days ago on YouTube. In the drama, Xu Kai is the titular Snow Eagle Lord who embarks on a journey to rescue his kidnapped parents. Along the way, he meets a princess played by Guli Naja. And that's it for drama updates. Moving on, celebrity updates, and today we begin with some Yang Yang photos. On May 14th, the 31-year-old actor shared a batch of photos taken in Italy. Here is one of him with sunglasses and what looks like a white Valentino t-shirt. Here is another, a wider shot. Looks like a lovely spot on the water, surrounded by picturesque buildings and gondolas. Here is one more, side profile. The actor also met up with Thai actress Davika. Here is a photo she shared on the same day of them both in Venice. Lastly, for celebrity updates, there's a new video of Zhang Zhehan on Yo-Yo Rock on YouTube, a short but personal one. 32-year-old Zhang Zhehan recently held concerts in Thailand on May 10th and 11th. The YouTube channel Yo-Yo Rock has been uploading Zhang Zhehan official lyric videos for several months now, and yesterday uploaded a personal message from the singer. In the video, Zhang Zhehan quickly introduces himself and says hello to Yo-Yo Rock followers. He tells viewers not to miss out on his music on the channel. Yo-Yo Rock belongs to Rock Mobile Corporation, which is a music publisher based in Taiwan. And that's it for celebrity updates. Before we get to our last segment, just to say that this show wouldn't be possible without you guys tuning in, so I thank you all for your support. If you enjoy the content, do like and subscribe, and don't forget to click that notification button for more updates. If you'd like to contribute, consider giving this video a super thanks. It is the heart-shaped button with the dollar sign below this video. All funds support the show and keep it going. Or you can check out my Patreon page, where for a dollar or more a month, you'll have access to perks like recaps, requests, and have your questions answered. On that note, it's Tuesday today, so time for another segment of Where's Mark Is At? The title of the segment doesn't refer to where I'm at physically, it refers to where I'm at in the dramas I'm following. I'm currently following one drama. I just started The Ingenious One starring Chen Xiao and Rachel Mao. I'm on episode 2 and following it on iQiyi where it's available with English subs. Also, I recently finished watching The Long Season, and without giving away any real spoilers, here are my final thoughts on it. The Long Season stars Fan Wei and Qing Hao. The modern drama premiered on April 22nd and aired the last of its 12 episodes on May 1st. If I remember correctly, all but one of its episodes were about an hour long. The odd one out was about a half hour. The drama is directed by Xin Shuang, who also directed 2020's The Bad Kids. In the drama, Fan Wei is an old taxi driver who's been bogged down by tragic events in his life earlier on. 
in the present day, an incident involving his good friend and colleague, played by Ching Hao, leads him to clues that might give him some closure on those tragic events. Simply put, The Long Season is one of the best dramas, if not the best, I have ever seen. I highly doubt I will see a better drama this year or even in the next few years, but of course, I hope to be proven wrong. They need to make more dramas like this. The Long Season is excellent in every aspect, its acting and plot being its two strongest. Fan Wei will receive some sort of recognition for his masterful performance. He must. At least one of the top three TV honors in China. Ching Hao and Chen Ming Hao were both excellent as well, and they were barely recognizable as their characters in old age. I thoroughly enjoyed all three of their performances. The drama jumped back and forth between the present day and 20 years ago, and it was really fun watching the actors portray their characters at different stages of their lives. Plot-wise, the drama reconciled everything perfectly. There is always that fear that with all the intrigue surrounding the characters' inner and outer journeys, that the story will fall flat at the end, but there's no such disappointment here. Everything was tied up nicely, and it was topped off with a beautiful moment at the end. It's not an idle drama, there are no traffic actors, the drama is solely reliant on, like I said, its strong performances and story. If you're moved by these things, I highly recommend you check it out. As of yesterday, the long season has a 9.4 score on Douban, and not just from a few thousand ratings, from over 550,000. I'd give it the same, 9.4 and 2 thumbs up. I've only ever given two Chinese dramas a 9 or better rating, I believe, 2015's Nirvana and Fire, and now this. For me, indeed, it's one of those few and far in between masterpieces. And that's been another segment of Where's Mark is At. It also brings us to the end of this episode. Enjoy the rest of the week, and I'll see you guys Thursday. As always, stay safe, and I wish you clear blue skies, good health, and happiness. Until next time, cheers.